Over the course of a month, the Imperial fiefdoms had been secured from invasion thanks to the influx of experienced officers and men from the defeated Asakura clan. And despite the hit taken in the defection of Lord Kikuchi, the forces loyal to Naruko were numerous enough that no single clan could topple her anymore. The peace this brought was to be put to good use on the cause of the true heir of the Uesugi clan, Aya no Kata, also known as Lady Yamanuchi. You've worked it all out then. Forgive us, but there was little else to pass the time. Well, I'm glad of that at least. So these lords, can they be trusted? Of course, I have selected only those who knew my father well. They understand exactly what it means to side with me, and they nearly have the power to do it alone. But since they can't do it on their own, they'll need us, and the good lady here. Precisely, they need us for an excuse to do anything regardless. So, Empress Nerico, will you agree to the plan? Of course, we shall move quickly. They will know something is happening when my army appears in their lands. We will not need long, and if you have been successful, many of the people will resist reporting our presence until it is too late. I beg my leave then, your majesty, and shall be ready to depart in the morning. So be it. Good night. Nerico, why must you wear your field attire in the palace? Because it's faster. Does it matter? Appearances matter. This was an official audience with a future vassal of the realm, and you make yourself look sloppy, look weak. I don't know if it's really taken like that. Just because she says nothing, that doesn't mean she thinks nothing. Would it really be that hard to dress properly and prepare your face? Or is your girl there that useless? I do not ask that of her, because I do not think that is important right now. She should be offering, asked for or not, if she has any respect for you. What is your name, girl? Nagako, Kogo. Nagako. Oh, you're my maid's daughter. Yes, Kogo. Fascinating. Well, make sure to remind your lady that she needs to act a lot more like an empress. Yes, Kogo. Leave her alone, mother. We're going. You can be stubborn if you wish, but no one will accept a bumpkin as empress. Attend to your hair, at least. Ah, hopeless. Tanny, my lady, was that girl indeed your daughter? Yes, my lady. She is quite pretty. Something very appealing about her. Very suitable. Does her own cosmetics better than Nariko's, at least? She didn't get your looks, clearly. She is adopted, my lady. Is that so? Her true parents? Dead, my lady. What a shame. But perhaps we can arrange for her a rather nice turn of fortune. treasure. Right now we are moving out from the capital region to go back to Uesugi territory in order to enact the plan of Lady Yamanuchi to overthrow Lord Uesugi himself and make herself the leader of the clan. On the way, I spotted big action going on around Takane Castle here. There's a three-way war going on between the Takeda, the Uesugi, and the Tokugawa, and it seems to be focused right here. There are armies all over the place, gigantic field armies engaging in countless battles, no doubt but we're just going to ignore that and use their distraction to our advantage. We'll be sneaking around in the Uesugi territory without many lords actually detecting us. First, we need to speak with Lord Kojima, one of the more powerful Uesugi lords. He has a letter for us to take to Lord Noe as part of this defection plan. So first, we'll agree to that. We need to go and deliver it up in Niigata, which is the second large city of the Uesugi clan up there to the northeast. So we'll just move on over there. And actually, we discovered Lord Noe just outside the city he was leaving as we approached, so we will deliver this letter to him in order to begin the ultimate plan for the conspiracy. Kojima and Naue together control a decent amount of territory and a lot of influence over the clan, but they're still going to need a little bit more help. Have you established your public reason for being here? 
I'm on a mission for Great Lord Hojo. It will involve causing a scene. You should place men loyal to Lord Uesugi on guard in the city today. I believe I understand you. I shall send word ahead. So long as you do not rustle too many feathers, the guilds will be with us. If I declare it, Nagata will be released from the Uesugi. And how many men are available? As many as Lord Uesugi will be able to muster. But they're not ready. It is difficult to gather forces in a location without need of them. Very suspicious. Once we start, there will be no going back. Just as well, for there is nothing worth going back for. <laughs> well said, my lady. This will be an important step. I think we could use further incentive for the soldiers to take our side. You have something in mind? Uh, yes, your majesty. Your man there, the samurai. He is known to be in your service to our people. If he was at my side, it would serve as a reminder that to support my lady is to support you as well. I would be willing, Lord Naue, but I cannot simply leave the Empress without a bodyguard. She'll just have to swallow her pride and go back to her old bodyguard for a bit. That sounds quite refreshing. You may have Yoshio then. And how long will you need? A week, I should imagine. Return with your forces then, and we shall put the will of the Uesugi lords and people to the test. With that secret meeting over, we're going to rush on to get into Niigata and take a walk around the streets, because to anyone who might be observing our forces and our movements, we need to make it look like we were here for a completely unrelated reason to anything that Kojima and Naue may be known to be plotting. So Naruko is going to carry out a mission on behalf of someone completely unrelated, who of course hasn't actually asked for us to do it, but no one else has to know that. We're going to break into the prison at Niigata in order to break out one of the prisoners here who happens to be in service to Great Lord Hojo, Lord Oeda, a fairly important Hojo retainer actually. So we're going to start a prison break, we'll ask him to just stay back by the prison and Naruko will do all the work because we don't want to risk Oeda actually being wounded on the way out. Luckily there aren't many guards and there's pretty much no one around the town at all actually in preparation for this, suggesting that perhaps uh, our tip off the Lord Naui that we were going to be causing trouble has uh, managed to make its mark and make things nice and easy for us. So a couple of guards appear to try and stop us from escaping. They are no match, of course, for Naruko's sword skill. We'll cut them down and then just search the rest of the escape route. It's on the other side of the city, the way out, so we do have to fight our way to that position before we and Ueda can escape. A samurai comes at us and he actually takes a shot from the tepu on his armor and manages to keep coming, so we're gonna have to come for a sword fight. Unfortunately for this guy, his sword skill's very inadequate. He had a much longer weapon but swung it far too early and was cut down. And Naruko, after that, promptly cut down the remaining guards who were actually completely unaware of anything going on. So Ueda was freed and this gives us the nice advantage of everyone who likes him now likes us because we've done him a favor. So this is a nice way to beginning relations with some of the lords further east. So with that done, our mission, official mission at least, is now complete. So we need to basically just disappear. I ran south and actually spent a good number of days, almost the entire week that we needed to wait, looking for Great Lord Takeda. I eventually came across him here near Takane where the Takeda main force was gathering to make an Assault, and I went in to try and speak with Takeda because of course as one of the big players in the local politics he actually needs to know about the plot. However, <laughs> we knew you'd come to slobber with the big idiot eventually. And now, treasured Empress, you'll see how little you two are treasured by those who matter. Who hired you? Time for talking's over, your majesty. Like seven will be enough to stop me. Time to deal with this little interruption. Seven guys coming out of four archers in the background, cut down to three immediately by Naruko's Teppo shot. Prioritizing taking out the archers so there'll be less fire coming down on us as we fight these swordsmen. We're able to take out one, and then I dodge behind this rock, blocking the line of sight of those archers, now making it much safer for us to fight in the melee against these swordsmen. Two quick slashes, deal with those two attackers. Now it's just the archers for us to worry about. We'll have to run out from our cover and now start dodging these arrows. You can see they're flying down the hill towards us. We need to try and get up onto the flank of the rough line formed by these three archers to try and get them to block each other's line of sight and of course get close and force them to fight in melee where Naraka will be able to win. The first guy goes down, although we take an arrow. The damage, not particularly large, thanks to Naraka's powerful armor so we can still advance, dodging more arrows and drawing the other two guys into a melee. From this point onwards, no problem at all. We have defeated all of the assailants and can go looking for Tagada. 
Lord Tacita! My lady, you are... Uh, what have you been doing? Stopping them before they got to you. Thugs. Who knew you requested to be met alone? I didn't tell anyone. But I suppose it could be worked out. Well, someone wants us both dead. And they certainly don't want us meeting. Oh no. Uwasuki is behind this. He is exactly the sort of person to do such a thing. He's tried before? There were other incidents. I never found out if it was him, but... Uh, your successors did a rather good job. You would have got some answers out of those dogs, I bet. Sorry. I mean, I'm glad that nothing happened to you. And if it was Uwasuki, then I actually came to talk about something that will turn the tables on him. So did I. You should go first, your majesty. You truly are marvelous, your majesty. It's not just me. Plenty of brave people are working right now to make it happen. If Uesugi falls or can no longer fight, then that will lighten my heart considerably. But the matters of Hojo and Tokugawa remain. Without the Uesugi keeping them at bay, I don't know what will happen. Lord Takeda, you and your people need to rest. When this is over, I will bring my army to stand at your side. They will not dare invade while I guard your borders. My lady, your majesty, this kindness is... But can I ask for more? To guard our borders will solve one problem, but there are so many others. My retainers are restless. They see the welcome you gave Lord Oyamada, and now they all begin packing their chests in the dead of night. I'm sorry, I didn't realize what I was doing. You don't need to apologize. They are right. They and their people are better off under your protection. That is why you must accept me as your vassal. I'm not looking for your subjugation, only cooperation. And I already know I can count on you for that, Lord Takeda. But if you do not take responsibility, then the clan will... I fear you will only see my lands fall to another. All I can do is give you my fields, give you my men, and... Well, I don't know what I myself should do. Lord, think of the honor of your family. So much was given to build your clan. You should not talk of spending that freedom so liberally. Forgive me, your majesty, but I am saddened to think you do not believe I have already thought on these matters at great length. And in the end, will it not be those who bowed to the will of the empress that are seen to have been honorable? I don't know. I ask much, but to our mutual advantage, surely. I need you to take this weight off me before I am crushed, before Takeda becomes a weapon wielded against you. I beg you, your majesty. I do not know what else I can do. I feel like I know what you want. The weight is the worst part of this. I will think about your request, if you can get each and every lord of Takeda to consent. Then, I could make it happen. I am already making room for Lady Yamanuchi in my court. If you were to join her, beside her, it would be a symbol of peace. A final end to the Uesugi Takeda Wars under the New Order. That would actually be amazing. Your Majesty, thank you! I will see to it at once. All of the vassals are of the same mind. They have made that much very clear. Uh, thank you! Thank you! So after that particularly enlightening meeting, I'm going to start heading back to Niigata because about a week has now passed since we gave Yoshio over to Lord Naue to begin organizing the military portion of Lady Yamanuchi's usurpation plan. So I came back here to the castle to speak with Naue to see how things were going, but he said that more time was still required before everything would be settled as he puts it. So I decided to just stay at the inn in Niigata and just wait for the time to come, thinking that it probably Probably won't be very long in the future now, but we get a message saying that the Ukita clan has declared war on us in our absence, so that is a little bit troubling. We only just recently got peace with them, so clearly they still have some unresolved issues they wish to work through. At first I thought I might just stay here and ignore that, but I thought I probably should go back since we need to be waiting anyway. I'll use this time to just go and investigate the Ukita situation and make sure nothing is going wrong. We do get a message saying that some of our troops have just been defeated near Sasayama and shortly after that 
had actually received a message saying Sasayama was under siege. So it seems the Okita are immediately going on the offensive, and I'm not necessarily able to rely on my own forces to stop them because we don't know what they're actually doing. So I am going to come and check over everything. On the way, stopping at Kyoto to accept the service of a new lord. This is one of the former Iko Iki lords who decided to come and join us all of a sudden. So that's always nice. He won't have any territory, but he'll still be able to muster a few troops. Now heading west, I see all of my forces falling back from the battle front with the Ukita, which I thought was highly suspicious at first. But then I realized it's just because they've already defeated the force that was besieging Sasayama. It just still says it's under siege for a while after the sieging force has been defeated because that's how the game works basically. So things were okay and we spotted other uh, Imperial forces basically going to town on the Yukita all over the place. But there was one thing that they had missed. Osaka is destroyed by the Yukita main force. It's Great Lord Okita and a supporting officer just rampaging into our territory. So it seems our advance into the enemy was a little bit premature because we missed the fact they had actually already advanced into our own territory and now managing to meet with Lord Okita, he basically reiterates his previous demands that we kill ourselves as the only way to possibly end the war. We are not going to go along with that, we challenge him to battle, but he actually has a pretty big force here, he has a hundred more men than us, so we'll need to be a little bit careful. This is also a night battle, reducing the accuracy of our range units, always a problem. I'm sending the cavalry off far away from our forces, ready to do a rear or flank attack, and telling them to form a tighter formation, I don't think they'll be able to sweep the enemy off the field in this battle so I basically want a narrow but powerful cavalry attack so we can still be vaguely together after they've charged to continue the fight. Our ranged units trying to damage the enemy but it's not doing very much. You can see some of the shots way off target landing far below the enemy's position on top of those hills. Now, on the minimap there, I'd spotted that there was one enemy far behind their lines, and often when this happens, it means that's the enemy commander, because sometimes he walks up quite far behind the army as it advances in formation. So Naruko now rides out to go and try and disorient the enemy's force by taking out their commander right at the start of the battle. Super risky, because all those enemy ranged units will now basically start firing at her, but luckily, the night effect will now mean they're basically missing very wide, widely. You can see arrows flying way, way past the mark, above Naruko's head there. We cut down whoever that was. It wasn't Great Lord Ukita by the looks of things, but it might have been the supporting commander. Whatever the case, it does seem to have a uh, very riling effect on the enemy. They send basically their entire army suddenly at Naruko. She's in big trouble, but this is having the effect we need. It's split the enemy force up. Some of them have gone to attack our army. Others are now going to be doubling back on themselves to go after Naruko, and Naruko is going to double back on herself and rush back to our lines. All this will basically mean the enemy now arrive in a kind of staggered way. Their formation has been uh, spread out along the line of its own advance, meaning that small groups will be arriving one at a time, basically, and give our force a good chance to kill lots of enemies before they can put their full strength to bear on us. So Naraka now, having made it safely back to the back of our army, can now start sniping away at this huge wave of enemies coming over that hill towards us, and the rest of our ranged troops will do the same. I'm preparing the cavalry to attack on their flank, moving up into a nice position and our front lines will begin to engage but you can see the enemy are kind of breaking off as they hit our front line their morale is low I order the cavalry to attack to try and exploit this and look at this basically their entire army suddenly flees trying to escape from this cavalry charge it's not gonna work a few of them still continue their fight driving on into our front line but our front line can now move forwards to envelop them and Naruko are going to join our troops out in the open to start exploiting this sudden weakness of the enemy army that has basically annihilated them in a matter of seconds seconds. These fleeing troops now have very little chance of escaping, although the ones who uh, fled right at the start, just before the battle actually got going, they will escape. So as this battle comes to an end in a very important victory, we basically haven't defeated the entire enemy army. We can see here in the results, we managed to avoid losing anything in terms of kills. The enemy lost nearly 200 troops killed, but they still have nearly 100 ready to go. They seem to rally against us, but at this point, they're going to have a big disadvantage in numbers. So I don't know what hope they have that this battle can go any better better than the last one. We form up to start attacking them as they come out of a river just in front of us. Again, trying to use our ranged units to reduce effect because it is still a night battle. 
Now, as they come over, I'm going to order the cavalry to charge from the flanks, believing that basically they don't have that many troops, so we can just rush them and take them out in this battle, especially because the fact they're climbing out of a river has completely broken them up in terms of their formation. Their range unit is nowhere to be seen right now. So a little battle takes place on the side of the river, and the enemy actually put up a little bit more of a defense than I expected. They seem to take down some of my cavalry here. There's a little cluster of spearmen fighting together as more and more reinforcements pour in from the river. But now the rest of our army will be able to advance forwards and charge down into said river to start taking out the enemy. And we discover that this is where all of their skirmishes were hiding, a very bad place for them because they were out of line of sight of everything. And now everyone's just going to be jumping down from the bluffs above them to annihilate these guys in a quick melee. And the river will make it hard for them to escape because it slows their movement. So very good. We basically annihilate the enemy at this point and the battle soon is over. That's the rest of the Ukita main invasion force gone and this time we actually took losses despite it being the easier battle thanks to my premature attacking. Lord Ishiki, their subordinate commander, is captured. We're going to let him go in order to gain our already pretty decent relationship with him so that is all good. And that really is the end of the Ukita invasion force with the rest of their territory under attack. There's not much more they can do. Where is Ishiki? I let him go. He would have made an effective hostage. Well, I made a deal with him already. Mary, come here, please. What's happening? We are all going to sit down, and you are going to tell me everything you know about Kogo Massacre. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think we know anything, for sure. Then tell me every rumor you have heard. I know you keep these from me, and I understand why, but I want to know. Ishiki told me that Okita declared war on us solely out of hatred for my mother. So what happened? Why is she tearing everything apart by just existing? Your Majesty, I have heard many rumors from many lords. They cannot all be true, for they are quite conflicting. Lords believe what they or their masters want to believe. Examples, please. <laughs> many believe in her previous time as Kogo, she wished to dominate the samurai and influence the wars to weaken the noble households. You can see how your own bearing has stirred up such memories. And what about the attack on the palace? I mean, there are loads of stories you hear. Been hearing them for ages. But lots of people say she wanted it all to happen. That she wanted the Emperor dead so she could be Empress. I too have heard that story, and I am inclined to believe it, sorry to say. And why is that? Great Lord Amako recently told me that many of the Daimyo detest Masako for what she made them do, and many of those same daimyo are thought to have been involved in the conspiracy against the Emperor. He would say nothing more, but the connection seems strong. But the conspirators were there to kill her too, that can't be right. Maybe that was a change of plan at the last minute, if they hated the plan so much. Indeed. And now they live in fear, for Masako knows what they tried to do and can hold them hostage with that information. The circumstances will cause most to believe her side of the story, so they must hide their own, lest she decides to strike. Well, now we're just spinning our own rumours. It all just seems a bit much. Perhaps. And of course there are those who say that the Emperor knew of Masako's schemes and staged the attack to cut her out of the picture. Equally unsuccessful, of course, were it true. So, we don't actually know anything, or whether there is even anything to know. That's rumours for you. People still go mad over them, though. There must be something more to it. Plenty of other talk about her involvement in various dramas around the capital back then, and talk that she's possessed, eats children, that kind of thing. Bad reputations are self-sustaining. Good ones, too, luckily. Not that she tries to get one of those, if all this stuff with the assassins is coming from her. Assassins. Nagako, you grew up in the courts of Kyoto. You can't just sit there like a stump. You must have something for us. There was an old rumor that she had a daughter named Nariko. Just a rumor, was it? I mean, that wasn't all. It was that she had other children, too. Haven't seen much sign of that. You say that. One of the myriad variations of the story from the night of the attacks says that the real purpose of it was to kill her illegitimate children. Of course, you have to believe the allegations that she had any. Was there any evidence for it, Negiko? I mean, if someone knew about me, they must have known about any others. I... I don't know anything for sure, Your Majesty. We're open to guesses, my little dove. Sorry, I... I really don't know. It's okay. 
No one really knows anything. That's the real picture I'm getting. Maybe there's something to this deal with the Lords, to explain their behavior. And I still need to confront Mother about using assassins without my permission. Really, what I need is to be in Kyoto. If we can just finish everything up, then I can finally get back into courts, back into everything, and take control. I agree entirely, Your Majesty. We shall be vigilant, yet quick. If all the pieces fall as we've arranged, we shall gain unstoppable momentum overnight. The truth is sure to be shaken out then. After that engagement, I headed over to the west to join our forces at Akashi Castle where they were laying siege. Lord Saika wants to have a feast up at Kanazawa, but we are going to ignore that. We do have certain important business items to attend to first. Now, the Ukita clan offers a peace agreement. Quite unusual for peace to be offered so soon after a war starts. They clearly don't want us to rampage through their territory as we are apparently about to. But I realized if I accept this piece, then Akashi Castle won't fall, and it will if we keep the war going for another day. So basically, I decided to make an ultimatum. I said we can have peace if you just give us Akashi Castle for free using this dictate terms menu. And they actually agreed to that immediately, so that's perfect. We'll take the castle without any battle, without any losses, and of course the Akita clan will be weakened and taught a lesson for declaring war on us. That's going to secure up our western border pretty nicely. You can see we've now got a nice linear set of castles which we can defend against both the Akita and the Amoko coming from the west before they can get into our more meaty capital region with all the villages and cities. So that is nice. We will fall back from that and hope the Akita do not return to fight us again. But of course now we need to go back to the Usugi lands to follow up on the plan with Lord Naue. He's surely ready by now. It's actually been a couple of weeks, so we make our way over there spotting the Usugi and the Takeda still fighting over their various borders on the way, but for all I care, they can continue to do so in ample distraction. The Amoko are invading, but we have no time for that. It's time to finish off this plan. More and more lords of fallen clans were flocking to Nariko, seeking a chance to re-enter power before the wars came to an end and the opportunities for advancement dried up. And many were sure that the wars would indeed come to an end, for the record of the imperial fiefdoms had been turned around by changes to their military hierarchy and the surrender of the Asakura clan. Now they commanded a military that was more than a match for any clan, even the mighty Uesugi. The burst of momentum just needed one more push to become unstoppable. And if that push could topple the only clan able to threaten Nariko in open battle, the entire land would see that the new power of Kyoto could not be resisted. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me as we catch sight of a way to finally end the Sengoku Jidai in the next episode of Nariko's Treasure.